Today's book is about an animal that is a pet that I think everybody in our classroom has, okay? So today we're going to read a book about one of the most popular pets in America. What pet could that be? This pet rhymes with log. Did you say dog? Log, dog. Those are rhyming words, right? So what pet do you think we're going to read about today? That's right, we're going to read about dogs. And this book is called The Stray Dog, written by the author Mark Simant. And it's a true story. So this is a true story, something that really happened to somebody. So that's pretty cool. Hmm, the word stray. The stray dog. Hmm. Does that word, is that a new word for you or do you already know what stray means? When you look at the picture on the cover of this book, are there any clues that tell you what the word stray might mean? I'm thinking that the word stray might have something to do with a runaway dog because I see somebody here that might be trying to find this dog and maybe catch this dog with a net. And this dog, if you look at his face, he looks a little bit worried, like maybe he's running away. Let's find out more about the stray dog. It was a great day for a picnic. When I look at the pictures on these first pages, I can have a clue as to where the people might live that are in this story and maybe where the dog might live. Do you think they live in a small town like us or do they live in a big city? It kind of looks like they might live in a big city and that maybe they're taking this bridge to maybe a park where they could have a picnic because it was a great day for a picnic. What's this? Asked the father. It's a scruffy little dog, said the mother. Those are the people in the story. And there's the scruffy little dog in the story. He looks hungry, said the girl. I think he wants to play, said the boy. The children played with him and taught him to sit up. Do you see? Do your dogs know tricks? Mine know a few. They named him Willie, and they kept playing with him until it was time to go. What kinds of games do dogs like to play? They like to play fetch with things like sticks and with these sphere-shaped balls, right? Can you say that word sphere? Sphere. This is a ball, but it's in the shape of a sphere. What else is shaped like a sphere? Maybe the sun or the moon sometimes it looks like a, well the moon's always shaped like a sphere, but sometimes it doesn't look like a sphere. A basketball is shaped like a sphere. Mm -hmm. A bowling ball might be shaped like a sphere. Oh, the next page shows the family driving in their car. Do you think that it is daytime or nighttime? I can see that the car has lights on. So that gives me the clue that it is nighttime when the family is leaving from, from the picnic, right? Let's take Willie home, said the children. No, said the father. He must belong to somebody, exclaimed the mother. They surely would miss him. 
Because boys and girls, are we supposed to take dogs home that we see? Probably not. Not right away. Unless the dog's in danger, right? Because he might just be a little lost. But if the dog's in danger, or it's too cold, or he looks lost, then ask a grown-up what's best to do. Because you would hate to take him home and he'd be lost forever, right? Where do you think the family has to go now that it's nighttime? Can they stay at the park? So it looks like they might be leaving the park where you see the trees, crossing this bridge to go into the, into the city. On the way home to the city, the girl said, maybe Willie doesn't belong to anybody. Well, during the week, the family had Willie on their minds. They thought about Willie on Monday, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and again on Friday. They were thinking about Willie. Then finally, on Saturday, they went back to that same park to have another picnic. And this time, they brought something for Willie. What did they bring for Willie? That's right, they brought him a bowl of water and some food because they know that is a way to take care of a dog. So maybe Willie might be hungry if he's still there. He might want to be fed. Well, they all cried when he appeared. Willie, they said. But Willie didn't stop. Willie was in a big hurry. Why was Willie in a big hurry? Hurry. Who's behind the bushes? Do you know what the name of this person might be? This is somebody that might have a job that has to do with the animals. This person might be something that people call a dog catcher or an animal control officer. Have you heard that before? That is a long title for a job, isn't it? Animal Control Officer. And their job is to make sure that pets are safe and that they get to where they need to be. If he's lost, then he'll find, they'll find a home for him. Or if the pet is, is not being safe around people, they'll catch him and figure out what's wrong with the dog, okay? So that's what the Animal Control Officer is doing. He's trying to catch the dog because the dog must not belong to anybody if he's been at the park. For what? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's been there for at least six days. That's how long the family's been thinking about him. On this page, you can see where the dog catcher is running and running, trying to find Willie. And what is Willie doing? Oh, you can see that he's running and running too. Do you think the dog catcher is going to catch Willie? Let's find out. He has no collar. He has no leash, said the dog warden. Oh, dog warden. That's another word for an, a dog catcher or an animal control officer. A dog warden. This dog is a stray. Oh, there's that word again. Stray. What did stray mean? Stray is another word for an animal that is lost or doesn't have a home. It's a stray. It just lives on the streets or the sidewalks of a town and doesn't have anywhere to belong. And they know that because he's not wearing a collar or a leash. He doesn't belong to anybody. Well, the boy took off his belt and he said, wait, here is his collar. And the girl took off her hair ribbon and here is his hair, his leash. His name is Willie and he belongs to us. What did they do? Did they save Willie from being taken away by the dog warden? I think they might. Let's find out if the, what the dog warden has to say. Because look at poor Willie. He's hiding right in there, inside that net. He's kind of scared, isn't he?
Well, look at Willie. He put on that belt, then he put on that hair ribbon. Then he went off with the boy and the girl. And the dog warden watched him go away. So I think the dog warden said it was okay for Willie to go with that family. Well, they took Willie home. They gave him a nice warm bath. Got him all cleaned up. And they introduced him to the neighborhood where he went to meet some very interesting dogs. Where do you think they are right now? This is a place in the city where people can take their dogs to go play. And they can let them run free and have fun because in the city, people don't have yards like we do. So they need a place called a dog park to go play. And they took Willie there. He played so hard, he came home and took a nice nap. Willie settled in where he belonged. The end. Now, just like we did when we talked about um, our, our pets from our, our pet store, we talked about how we might have these pets at home, right? We have dogs and cats and maybe hermit crabs or guinea pigs or fish. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to think about how many dogs you have at home. Now, remember, everybody can answer this question even if you have zero dogs at home because zero is a number, and that would be an answer to this question. So, Mrs. Davis has some dogs here at my house. I have two dogs. So, I'm going to show you how to write um, that number. You're going to write the number two. Well, actually, let me back up a little bit. You're going to write the number of dogs that you have. So I'm just going to, I'll just show you the number, okay? Because I don't want to confuse you. I want to make sure that you write the number of dogs that you have, okay? So I have two dogs at my house. So I could write the number two like this to show that I have two dogs at my house, right? But some people, some some friends have some trouble writing the numbers like this, right? And they might, or they might write them and they're like, mm, it doesn't really look like a two. I want to do it a different way. And that's okay. You can do that a different way. We learned how to do those with tally marks, right? Tally marks are a fun way. I can just count the lines. One, two. I have two dogs at home. Another fun way is to draw pictures that show how many of those animals you have at home. So you can just draw little dog faces. I drew one, two, two dogs. Because at home I have two dogs. Now, what if you have zero dogs at home? You could write that number. You could write it like this with the number zero. Or you could also write it by drawing that dog, making a circle around it with a line through it, right? And that's our way of saying, no, we have none. There's none, zero dogs, okay? So I'm looking forward to finding out how many dogs you have at home, okay? So I want you to, to draw me either the number, the tally mark, or a picture of the dogs that you have at home. and that, after you draw it or write it, you can have your moms or dads or grandmas or grandpas take a picture and send it to us, okay? You can also reply to the email and type. Hmm, I wonder if you can find the number two on the keyboard and push send or reply, okay? You'll have to have moms and dads or a bigger brother or sister help you with that. But I think once you do it a few times, you'll be able to do it all the time, okay? All right, well, have a great day, and pet your dog for me, okay? Bye.